Broadway's my beat. From Times Square to Columbus Circle. The gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest smile in the world. Broadway's my beat. With Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Briefly, the white frozen sky of February holds, and Broadway cups twilight in its hands in curve of evening edition, in contours of quick walking women, and watches day melt and flow into eddies of nightfall. And what was gray is sudden scarlet, where chill was and surfaces and facades drained of color, the night glitter dances now, silvery and darted through with piercings of splintered light. And on first tides of nightfall, shock gathers, waits for the revelers, and they drift to it and run. Whirl on the dance of wind. Night waits, and shock opens its arms. And on a side street, this side street, brief screaming ride from headquarters. Side street spilling into Hudson River Dock. In it, this man hurled against its stone. Man stabbed. Man dead. And another man holding flashlight to the dead face. Then switching it off. Rubbing it against his cheek. Recognize him, Danny? Yeah, it's... Yeah, that's who. Joe Turner, rookie policeman, not three months out of the academy. He made the brass scroll in a hurry. It's an honor what's happened to him. You knew him, Muggerman? A little bit. A couple weeks ago, the boy came to me, said he didn't want to take up too much of my time. But he sure respected us fellas in homicide. Hoped it wouldn't be too long before he could make it himself. Hoped. Said he's going to try his darndest to be as fine as you fellas. Meaning us, Danny, meaning... Yeah, me too. Took me to dinner with his wife. That's when he told me. This is Pete Muggerman? I'll check. The way he's dressed, civvies. Must have been off duty. Anyway. You noticed the thing? Yeah, felt it. Gun and shoulder holster under his coat. The rookie, Danny. You know how they are. Danny. His wife. Someone at headquarters must have called her, told her. Where about... is he? What's happened to him? Wait a minute, Betty. Let go of me. Let go. Me. They said something is. They said don't come, but I made them tell me where, and I got here as soon as the traffic. Baby. You don't care anymore, do you, honey? You don't have to care about anything anymore. Joe, what happens to me? Listen to me, what happens to me? Betty. You shut up. I'm asking you. Come on, Betty. Up. I'll take you home. Quiet ride. Beginning night and crowd shakes that scud swiftly away, regroup again, waver and dissolve again. And the woman beside you, movement of lip to mouth the lost and bitter and silent words. The sudden gesture leans away from you and quickly draws her ring against the car door window. Leans back closes her eyes and gets the instant to let the memories tangle themselves with knowledge that her husband is dead now. Forever gone now. Oh. Huddles it. Huddles herself against it. Is still. End of ride. She's home now. End of something. Hey, you better let me have those keys. I'll do it. You need the lamp, too? Betty. Radio? Betty. The sun is shining. Oh, happy day. No more. Why did it happen, Danny? Now we'll talk about it. All right. Sit up, Betty. Yes. No. Tell me. About five o'clock, Joe got a phone call. 
from whom? An old friend of ours, a dear friend. We hadn't seen him for over three years. Who was he? Roy. Roy Harlan. Sailor. Merchant Mariner. Hmm. He called and I answered the phone and I said, Joe, guess who it is? It's Roy. Joe laughed and said, give me the phone. And he said, Roy, Roy, old son of a gun. Where are you? I'll be right down to get... Betty. Where are you? Where are you? I'll go. Hello. Yes? I'm looking for Mr. and Mrs. Turner. Come on in. Betty. Betty, how's my girl? Roy. Oh, come here, Betty. I'm waltzing with my darling. Roy. Da, 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 Roy, let me go. What's the matter? Where's Joe? Who are you, mister? Well, what's the matter here? Joe's dead. Joe was stabbed. Oh, what are you... This man's a policeman, Roy. Joe's dead. Joe was stabbed. Joe was murdered. Oh. He's on his way to meet you. Listen. Listen, I waited. Joe didn't show up. That's why I came here. Betty. Don't make me cry anymore. Mister? Yeah. Who killed him? Did you? You had to ask that, huh? You had to ask Roy, Roy, stop! Stop! You had to ask that, Roy. He's a policeman like Joe. Joe, a cop? When? Since when? Danny. Danny, let Roy and me alone. I need to talk to someone. An old... Old friend, I mean... Where are you staying, Ryan? I guess... On a boat, the Vulcan. It's Dr. Pier 16. I'm ready. All right, Roy. times, other moods with other etiquettes of entry. This time you could say what has happened has happened to us, Danny. And it's happened before, Joe. And each time the cut is a little deeper. Man of the force to be stabbed down in the cold blood. One walks quietly and one knocks so as not to intrude upon one's thoughts. I understand, Joe. I have explained to your satisfaction the knock? Yes, Joe. Then I may proceed to what brought me to you in the first place. Of course. Thank you. Run down on Joseph Turner, a policeman of the city of New York. Graduated from police academy, and let's see. Recipient of excellent marks, a standout in enthusiasm and willingness to take on extracurricular duties and studies. Mm -hmm. Head of the class in marksmanship and unarmed defense against armed hoodlums. A note of commendation from his platoon sergeant to wit, and I quote, the boy has zeal. The sign on graduation to a beat. Where? The assigned area, a section of uptown Manhattan, bounded by 116th Street on the north, by Morningside Drive on the east. A section noted by us only for the frolics and funnies of college boys. A section... A long way away from where he was killed. I myself would have pointed this out to you if I... Yes, but... Danny. Catch. Brush your overcoat from the squad room. You intend to take the lieutenant from under my nose, Detective Mugovan? Just yeah, to Gino, up. I'm sorry, Gino, because it was just phoned in a riot call. A guy screamed, somebody will die if you don't get here fast. Somebody where, will... Mugovan? 1946 West 23 downstairs apartment where Betty Turner lives. That's where. Now, here, I'll help you with the coat, Danny. <laughs> Lines are drawn. Whoever screamed murder over the phone must be yeah. killed. Yeah. Suddenly everything sounds happy. You kill me, Roy. Please, please. Open up, Betty. It's Danny Clover. Come on. Yeah. Danny, 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 Danny,
I'll take that gun roll, sure. Sure, take it. What happened, Betty? She went out of her mind. You killed him. You killed Joe. Murderer! Murderer! You are listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. The end of a season is a time of promise on Broadway, for winter memories are strung with cold, gray images to be shivered against. Winter's dying, and already a wind sweeps in from a kinder part of the world, designed to gather up chill and icy fragments and ready the streets for March. And here and there a miracle appears. A mannequin who lives under glass is dressed in tweed. A pale moon becomes rimmed with yellow, and a new crop of conquerors begin to ride up the Hudson. Broadway flips a cigarette into the gutter and waits. The night was hours old where I was, West 49th, the detective Muggerman. And chill was this, new widow, new frightened man, and words. She just went right out of her mind, that's all. I should have killed you. I should have. You see? You see what I mean? Okay, what happened? You left. We talked. About the old times. About Joe. About my husband, Joe. And me. And him. The hellos, the beer beside the fireplace, the old times. The wonderful times, yes. How come you're talking like this now and two minutes ago you're going to shoot my head off? How come she was going to shoot your head off and I took the gun out of your hand? When you knocked on the door, she turned and I grabbed the gun. It went off, but I grabbed it. She was hope out of bed. Oh, he's not lying. I was going to kill him. She had me backed up against the wall for the last half hour, begging me to say I killed Joe. How could I? You killed him, Roy. Betty. Betty. He was alive. He called. He went to you. He's dead. You killed him. Because you're here, he's dead. You killed him. Now, you see what I mean? What reason would Roy have for killing your husband? I don't know. You in love with her, Roy? What are you talking about? Are you in love with me? Listen. All I've gotten so far are you, Betty and Joe, good friends, always together, always... I come in port, I go see my friend Joe, who I grew up with. He got a wife named Betty, so this means to me what? Look, Roy... No, I... wait a minute. Wait a minute. This means instead of bringing a present for just Joe, I bring a present for his wife, too. I have a home-cooked meal when I hit port and beer. And what I've been doing, what they've been doing, and hurry up, you kids, and have a baby so I can be Uncle Roy. What's this I'm in love with? Dad. He never touched me. Never tried. What about you? What? What Muggerman's trying to say, I Betty, know what he's but... trying to say. I know what happened. I know what happened. What? What Roy said. I've gone out of my... Forget it. Joe killed. Shot. <gasps> Betty... I tried to kill a man. You admit it, huh? While I was pointing the gun at him, I was wondering how it would be when I pulled the trigger. The noise and the color and the... We better go downtown, Betty. And the thing to be done, because within her a new cell of anguish had formed and grown, then split itself into hysteria and violence, and split again into something else. Kill him. Let me kill him, Danny. And once more, the quiet ride through Fleeting City. And a headquarters booker for attempted murder. And suggest medical attention. And next morning, another thing to be done. Check on a friend of the family. Check on a man who had sidestepped death because a door was flung open. Check on Roy Harlan. And a place to do that, Hudson River, Pier 16. And a freighter, the SS Vulcan. And men dangling at her side, scraping off her health. The salt and stain and blisterings of other ports are called. Yell to one of them for the captain, and they yell back, he's in his cabin, and board a freighter anchored to February. And in a cabin, mahogany paneled against all climates and all seasons, a stocky man built low into the lines of his ship. You need something, mister? I'm from the police, Danny Clover. I knew that. Everything about you but your name. 
<laughs> what about me, too? The look. The look in your eyes. All you landlocked boys. Get on a ship and your eyes fill up with green things. <laughs> All right, cop. What do you need? One of your men. You uh, want one? Take one. But for now, just information about him. Suggestion. I know a better place to get it. From the man. I want it from you. Mm, I haven't your weight, but we'll debate if you want. There's a murder goes for this one. It was a long haul to this port, mister, from Cape Horn. My men had a lot of time to lay on deck and think about things. Other men, women, land things. You want me to act open mouth surprised one of them killed somebody? Not in me, too. All I want is some information on Roy Harlan. Roy? Have to be Roy. Uh Uh-huh. Good man. Tough man. Always a birth for a man like Roy. Any time on my ship, any time he wants. Captain, you need to know about Roy, huh? He signed on with me three years ago right here in New York. Saw him with the other ABs on the dock. I saw him, chose him right off in my mind, but I made him wait his turn. He's been with you all that time, three years? A little more than three years. January 1st, 1950 was the day. Almost lost Roy in Liverpool, though. Oh, Roy had been sailing with me for a year. All of a sudden, he wanted to sign off. He tell you why? I asked him why. Me, I asked him. He said he'd heard we were bound for New York out of Liverpool. He said, filth on New York. Walked out. Then my orders were changed. I combed Liverpool, found him, told him orders had been changed. We were going to hit the Mediterranean, Genoa, Cairo, ports. He came back with me. Before he signed on with you, you know where he... a coast freighter out of New York to Miami, then back years before. Roy liked my ship better. He told me. And this is the first time in New York since... Since three years. This time, Roy was crazy for it. Just had to be him, huh? Tell him. Tell Roy... What? Nothing. Don't tell him a thing. Danny? Yeah, I know, Danny. It happens. I never get used to it. Thomas, ready? Yeah, I'll be with you in a second. See if we get this stuff out of the way. Captain Gunther told Betty about the money the fellas handed up on Count Joe. Betty stared at him, wanted to know whether she'd have to use it on a lawyer. Better step on it, Danny. Yeah, sure. Oh, every time I go to a wake... Of... Here's your coat. Thanks. I've been down to records, Danny, that Roy Harlan. Well... Now, come on, I'll tell you while I was walking down the hall. Adler and Gino are out in the car waiting for us. What about Roy Harlan? Clean, no record. Check the neighborhood, too, same thing. Mm-hmm. He and Joe, best of friends, before Joe was married and after. Well? Well, what? There's still the question, Danny. Who killed a cop named Joe Turner? And the death of a man is this. A room in the place where he'd lived. Arranged now for the occasion of his dying. Against wall, row of bright yellow wooden chairs rented for friends and neighbors. And winter light on the black shawled women in them. And their men solicitous, gentle to their needs. Something is wanted from another room. A man rises, gets it, brings it back. An album of snapshots. And a woman flicks its pages. And others lean to her, look over her shoulder. And at a page, the woman raises her hands to her face, covers the brief pang of memory. The man looks helplessly at her, touches for an instant the hands that hide her face, then looks around, as if it seen his gesture. Then detaches himself from it, comes over to you, leans against the wall with you. It's a hard... That's my wife over there. She and Mrs. Turner are good. Are you a friend of the Turners? I knew Joe from the force. It's real nice the way you've always turned out for him. Real friendly. My wife and I were talking about that just before she... I... I knew Joe real good. And when he was a kid, running the streets. Oh? A 
some men. Watched them grow up. Watched them get married. From buying penny candies in my store to pipes and cigars. Knew them real well. Yeah. Shame what happened to them. Oh, uh, Clover's my name. Danny Clover. Real pleasure to meet you, Mr. Clover. I'm Pollock. Stan Pollock. Step out for cigarette. Sure. Sir, Mr. Pollock, have one of mine. Thanks. Sure needed that. You say you knew Joe, too, huh? You know very well, just a prince. That's what he was, a prince. Him and his wife, both. You say you didn't get to know them too well, huh? No. You're lost. Joe was a fine boy. If there's one person in the world who didn't deserve what happened to him, it was Joe. Weight brings out things in a woman, don't it? You noticed my wife a minute ago? You noticed how it hit her? It's me she was remembering, not Joe. Not really Joe. Oh? Yeah. Because a while back, it was me that was hurt real bad. I guess the missus was remembering how if it hadn't been for Joe, I might never have woke up out of my hurt. I might never... An be... accident? <laughs> accident? Assault and robbery. That's what it was. Assault and robbery. I was coming home from work late. Something clunked me real hard on my skull. Next thing I knew, I was in an alley and Joe Turner was over me. He telling me I'd been robbed and beaten. And he'd already called an ambulance. And him not even a cop then. And you know what? No. Next morning in the hospital, in the mail, I get back in an envelope all the money that was run for me. That's what Joe did for me. That's what the missus was remembering. Me. When did this happen, Mr. Pollock? Missus and I were talking about it a little while ago. See... Three years ago. New Year's Eve. And now, Joe Turner did. You going back in? No. No? You don't have to explain. I know how it is. It's been real nice talking to you, Mr. Clover. Many's the time I'd like to be on one like her. The Vulcan. Hey, he was something in myths or something, wasn't he? The same fellow. Mugovan finally makes it up a gangplank and he's going nowhere at all. Yeah, if you were going someplace, you'd scream because you'd get homesick. Looking for me, boys? Oh, hello, Captain. Who's your friend? Uh, Detective Mugovan. Oh, this is... Hi, Skipper. <laughs> you got it. Is Roy Harlan aboard? Hello. I'll get him for you. trouble with you is you don't read. Yeah. Let me ask you, Phil, something. Uh-huh. Roy going to ship out with me again? He coming up? I called him. He's coming. How about it? Roy shipping out with me? He ever tell you why he didn't want to go back to New York? You know why? <laughs> I'm going to stick around and listen. I've been wondering about that myself. Tough boy like... Hi, Roy. I was just saying you're a tough boy. Why? Is the time I have to be? I don't know. Here he is, boy. Captain, uh, Skipper. I think we can handle this by ourselves. Go right ahead. You mind if I just lean over this railing and cock an ear? My boat, this piece of railing included. What do you boys want? Didn't see you at the wake, Roy. I was here on the boat by myself. Breathing I had to do got done. What'd you do? Take a stance on the gunnels or whatever you call them and look out to see and be brave about it all? What do you want with me, Clover? I asked you once whether you killed Joe. Remember what happened? It never got finished. 
I'm asking you again, Roy. Huh? You killed Joe? <laughs> well? Two of you. <laughs> you kill him? Why should I? He was a cop. So? So you killed him. My friend and he was a cop and I killed him. Why? You didn't know he was a cop. Not until he met you. No. No, I didn't. Joe Turner was an eager boy. He wanted to make good, Roy. That's why he's dead, huh? That's right. Three years ago... Now, wait a minute. Three years ago, I was at sea. Where were we three years ago? Just talk to the fellas, Roy. I'm the watcher. New Year's Eve, and a man named Stan Pollock got beaten and robbed. The next day, you went to sea. So what have I got to do? Pollock got his money back. The way it figures is because Joe made you send it back. You told Joe what you'd done. So long, Roy. That's about it, Roy. You beat up a man, robbed him, ran away. Afraid to hit New York again. But when Joe got to be a cop, he remembered what you'd done. When you called him the other night, he met you. Tried to arrest you because you were a cop now, an eager one. You walked with him, trying to convince yourself that Joe was just kidding. Then you got convinced. Then you stuck him with a knife. L listen. I was misled, Danny. This boy isn't tough at all. Listen. Come on, Roy. All right. against the fugitive night on Broadway, the people of the swarm. Each in his own way, make time stand still. That's the trick. But dawn comes, and the gutters are choked with the wasted minutes, the infinite man-hours of loneliness and tears. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway, my beat. Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover, with Charles Calvert as Tataglia and Jack Crucian as Mugovan. The program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with musical score composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. In tonight's story, Herb Ellis was heard as Roy, Lou Merrill as the captain, Charlotte Lawrence as Betty, and Joe Forte as Mr. Pollock. Bill Anders speaking. <laughs> My Beat has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. For the past 55 minutes, you've been listening to the best in radio drama with Theater 5 and Broadway is My Beat. Join us again Monday night at the same time, 9.05, when FEN will present Dragnet's and X-1.